Alberto Lugo, um, 34 years old. Um, I was born here in Trenton, uh, Helen Full Hospital. Uh, as far as I know, I was an afternoon baby. Uh, I was supposed to be born on Christmas. My mom said I couldn't wait. Kind of a impatient person, so I'm impulsive. Um, besides that, uh, Trenton is home. Trenton is home for me. Well, what inspired me to do art was my family. Um, my mother was a really good drawler. My uncles were really good drawlers. Um, I had several people in my family do a lot of um, illustrative art. So growing up, I would, you know, see that and like, like wowed by it. And then um, I still remember I used to try to compete uh, with my uncles and my aunts. And then when I couldn't, I couldn't draw the way they did, I used to get really frustrated. And um, my mother would tell me like, you know, keep doing it, keep doing it, you're gonna get better, you're gonna get better. And then when I started doing that, and then kids at school were like really impressed with my artwork, then it started like, I can do this. You know, I was just like, I like art. Um, Cause it kind of made me a little bit popular. Um, as far as I didn't get passionate about art until after high school, because um, in high school, I didn't do art class because I didn't like it being graded. And sometimes I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do the project that they, they had assigned for me. Um, and then one time I got a C or a D in my art class and I was like, nope, I'm not doing art anymore. I'm not taking art class. And um, nobody I knew was making money off of art. So I always thought of it as a hobby. Um, graduated college and in college I was always drawing people's tattoos and you know, doing all these kind of art stuff that I always loved doing. I doodled on absolutely everything, which is a slow side, funny story. Had to take my SATs over again because on the little test booklet where it says notes, they said you weren't allowed to make any markings and I doodled in it and they threw out my, my original, my first time SAT scores were forfeited because I doodled on the notepad of the test booklet. So I was just like, you know, so it was like art cost me my first SAT scores. Um, and then um, I started tattooing when I saw people that were doing it that couldn't draw for nothing. And then um, I started doing it and I, the first time I ever tattooed a living canvas, um, I was instantly hooked. And then that fueled my passion into painting, um, designing clothes, uh, logos for people. Um, I even took a semi-graphic arts class just to see what it was, because it was for free. Um, and just pretty much, I love anything that has to do with creating. Um, but that's where I get my pa my passion came from my family and was mostly inspired by the positive reinforcement I got from my peers. Well, I would say the the biggest influence um, that growing up is the sense of community. Um, growing up in the Spanish community or the Puerto Rican community in particular, um, I grew up as a child at the Puerto Rican daycare center. It used to be here on Broad Street and then it moved to Hamilton Avenue. So I was surrounded by um, like a Puerto Rican daycare, enough, like a lot of Puerto Rican kids. Uh, uh, the, the workers there were Puerto Rican. Um, so we used to listen to a lot of music, uh, food. People used to bring, you know, the food and things. And Puerto Rico is just one of the things that just inspires you to do everything because a good soulful food in you just makes you feel good and you always want to do good things um, so yeah um, that um, and then um, like I said music dancing um, almost every Puerto Rican family's house I ever went to had nothing but um, as you also see behind me um, a lot of uh, Christian based art um, so there was always paintings from church. Um, I was very captivated by some of the paintings I would see at some Catholic church and some Christian churches. Um, that definitely influenced me. My family used to have, you know, elephants all over the place um, and angels and stuff like that. So I guess when I was little, I didn't realize how much it would influence me now until I, right now when I answer the question that um, between Christianity, religion, and the Puerto Rican community as when it came to our culture, with like our food, our music, um, even our mannerisms, 
Uh, there's certain sayings that, you know, should I say just sound better in, in Spanish, but that I only heard Puerto Rican families use, and I'm like, oh, like my mom, that's not just my mom. I was like, your mom said the same thing to your aunt. So that was that would be basically it. I would definitely say um, I would want to pass on the the, the community aspect. Um, I like to have my art viewed by the community. I love uh, painting in front of people where instead of where it's not just me in a room and then I just showcase it. I love when I'm doing a painting and people come up and that acts a thousand and one questions um, especially if I like I said if when we have Puerto Rican events and I have uh, an example would be uh, with Sam um, we did where I'm painting live as a band from Puerto Rico is playing and as their music is playing and brings me back to that growing up that sense of sense of belonging to that culture cause dancing and everything it completely influenced what I was painting. I had no idea. I didn't even have a pre-concept pre of what I was going to paint. I literally let the music decide what I wanted to paint. So whatever I painted was directly influenced from the music from that island. Um, that's just in one, in one aspect of how I use culture today. And I would say the way I could influence today's uh, youth would be like for them to see something like that they've never seen before. Because um, I know I didn't grow up seeing people painting while a band was playing or, you know, see um, any of my friends that were in the Puerto Rican community make a mural. Um, it was always people of other cultures that I've noticed. So if I could just influence someone in my Puerto Rican community that um, doesn't have influences like that, but they see or come across something of my work that influences them or inspires them to be more creative, um, I would take that as a very, very, a very good compliment for me. I would love to help the stigma that Trenton has. Like, I would love to change when someone says, oh, you're from Trenton, to be like, oh, you're from Trenton. Not, oh, like, oh, you're from Trenton. Mm -hmm. Like that little, the stigma, the stigma that this, uh, that Trenton is uh, violent, that Trenton is very poor, that Trenton is ghetto, or Trenton is, you know, uh, just not the best place to be. I, I can't say it's not, but I would, I know what it was and what it can be. This place has diamonds and a whole lot of rough, but um, I, you know, if, so that's I, what if I could just start scraping up some of that, that, that exactly. rough and start showing people, you know, the, there's diamonds here and that is worth coming here and you know and I also say like if we're already at the bottom we're like you know we're one of the cities that is considered at the bottom uh, first as the art community um, just make it bigger uh, more well known and uh, more financially uh, funded um, I would love to see people you know anyone whether it's you know your, your grandmother your aunt uncle or someone just you know in the middle of high school you know, wants to do some kind of artwork or they have a, you know, a natural talent for that, they can build a life around that. You know, they can pay their bills, you know, have a, you know, pay their car note and yet, you know, they get up and they don't have to go work for a boss or necessarily they can go and like, yo, I'm going to go paint a canvas. I'm going to do the tattoo. I'm going to write some music today or all the above and know that somehow, some way there's um, an uh, avenue for them to make financial gains doing that. So if um, I could influence this city to actually fund and actually, you know, finance artists so that, you know, visually, I think everything is art. I mean, architecture, everything that's ever been built was drawn before it was built. Um, I would like for people to understand that, you know, art is in everything. Um, there's nothing, even food, you know, like, you know, it's, I, I just want people to, not only just work hard thinking they have to go to college and get a job, that they can do something they're absolutely passionate about, practice it, and make money doing it. You'd be that one example like, you know, how am I gonna pay my bills, you know, you know, if they came from poverty or not, um, just to be like, you know, this is an avenue for you. You can do this forever to the day you die. And, you know, you can still put food in your mouth, a roof over your head, you know, heat 
the heat on, keep the lights on. And if you could do that while doing what it is you love, you never have to do a day of work in your life.